So welcome everybody to the As I Am webinar, the Autistic Student's Guide to Starting College in 2020. Since 2016, As I Am has worked with DCU and other universities and college right across Ireland and in helping them to become autism friendly and more fully inclusive across their campus for autistic students and their staff. We know that due to COVID-19, there will be a lot of changes in September and this will impact how colleges will operate. So we wanted to share with you some students' experiences of starting college and provide you with some tips on helping you with this new, exciting next stage in your life. So I'm pleased to introduce you now to Fiona Early, who is the Autism Friendly Coordinator at DCU, and our students, Kathy Brennan, Adam Greenan, Ben Rousam, and Emma Buckley. So I'll hand you over now to Fiona, who is our coordinator at DCU. Hi, Katie. So I'll just give a little explanation about my role in DCU. My role is called Autism Friendly Coordinator. And what I do is on a day-to-day -day basis, I make sure that what the project said they would do is happening every day. So there are actually things at the moment, actions we're calling them, that DCU said they would do. For example, making the environment sensory friendly. That includes quiet spaces and chaotic spaces. Um, doing some research into students transitioning into DCU. Also linking in with the newly founded Neurodivergent Society. And really just making sure that the voice of all students in DCU are heard. So there's very tangible steps of what a university needs to do to be autism friendly. But the main step is that we hear from students on the spectrum of how the project is going and what they would like to see change. So a major part of my role is linking in with students who are on the autistic spectrum and finding out how their academic and how their social life in DCU is going and what we can do to support it. A lot of the time I would link students in with the disability and learning support team and they have a vast array of, um, of support, for example, counselling, OT, assistive technology. We know that every student's needs are unique and every student's skills are unique. So it's really important that the, the student gets time to talk to an OT and devise a plan that really works for them and they have the opportunity to keep linking in with the OT and the disability and myself to make sure that their plan is working. Thank you Fiona, yeah that's brilliant, um, thanks for that overview. Um, so for now we'll head on to our students and delighted now to chat to you all and to hear all your experiences and to hear your tips for other students as well. So Cathy, we'll start with you. Um, what advice can you give to first year students before they start their course? Hello, uh, just to say I'm Cathy. I am going into my second year of biomedical engineering in DCU and I'm the chairperson of the Neurodivergent Society. So my advice is quite long winded because it's um, there's a lot that you can do to help yourself in the month or two leading up to starting college. And I found I took it way to excess, but a little preparation goes a long way. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is academic preparation. You, before you go into your course, you should know yourself whether you feel you'd be best off keeping physical records of your notes or you'd be better off keeping everything digital. Once you make the decision, physical or digital, you should get a folder either on your drive or in real life for each of your modules in semester one. And you should start putting your notes in your folder immediately so that when it comes to exam time in 12 weeks time, you're not struggling to find where week one of one module is and then you find it's in another folder entirely. Because that just, it stresses you out and it's unnecessary if you just take a little time now to look at your list of modules and think, okay, I have five modules this semester. I have my five folders set out. And if you want to be extra prepared, every college in Ireland has module descriptors. It's part, of, um, it's part of the legal requirements for a college in Ireland. 
So those module descriptors are hugely helpful. They're, they're basically the syllabus, but just for your module. And they also, if they're in date, they lay out exactly how the module um, examinations and continuous assessment will work. So I would highly recommend to everyone that they at least print those off and kind of go through with the highlighter and take notes of, okay, so this module is mostly CA. And sometimes in some colleges, you're told even when the CA is due, like what we, but in others you aren't. But at least knowing when you're going in, you have kind of that security of knowing, okay, I've done my preparation, everything's in place, and I know where everything, where I'm going with the next 12 weeks. So that's my main kind of advice would be the preparation. Another thing would be to actually go to your college and make sure you know the locations of your at least first day's classes. Um, I know in DCU, the buildings, it's quite clear, but within them, the rooms are a bit all over the place. So it just saves you a lot of stress if you um, take a bit of time to know where exactly you're going. And um, the place where I fell down is I did all of this and then I kept going and doing more preparation. So once you prepared a bit, you need to take a step back and do the things that I didn't do and I wish I had, which are the next two things, which is soothing techniques. Now is a really good time in, um, in July or whenever this goes up, August, to get into really good healthy habits that you can maintain for the 12 weeks. Because the 12 weeks, they're going to be tough and then the four weeks after for your exams and such in some ways. And you need to be able to find a way to decompress. And I know that I left it until I was very stressed to try and de-stress. Whereas if you go into college knowing yourself and knowing how it best suits you to de-stress, it's a lot more um, easy to keep on top of your own well-being. That's how I put it. So a few suggestions I'd have is there are breathing techniques you can look up on YouTube. Then there are apps such as Calm and Headspace. I love journaling and art. It's highly recommended for exercise for anti-stress property. Never really worked for me, but it may work for you. And finally, um, just keeping a diary or a calendar so that if things do spiral, you're able to go back and kind of identify what triggered it. Um, but mainly it's just keeping a lid on the anxiety and not kind of hyping it up too much. So prepare what you can and then kind of know that there are supports, which is my third point. Sorry, this is very long winded. <laughs> but um, remember that you're not the only first year. There have been many first years before you and there are many first years now. And what you're going through is something that a lot of people have gone through to varying degrees of success. So there are supports there for you. In every college that I'm aware of, there is a disability office and the people there work, you know, by definition with disabled students. And they will be of an empathetic nature and they'll be able to help you from a staff perspective. If you're the first person in your family to go to college or a socioeconomic disadvantage back then, there are access, in DCU it's called access, but there are various offices for that as well. So you should never feel like you're the first of your kind or such because there is always support available if you're proactive and you look for it. Um, failing everything, you can go to the advice centre or to the student union. The students' union may seem like they're kind of all-knowing, but at one stage they were also first years and they were also intimidated, so they'd be able to help as well. So just a quick summary, prepare what you can and what it's helpful to prepare. Learn what you can do to um, learn what you can do to look after yourself and to keep yourself well while you're not under strain. And then remember that it's no 
failure to need support and that there are supports available. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Cathy. That's um, just some brilliant tips there for students. And you've already answered the next question, but you might have something to add. What did you find helpful in the first term that you would recommend to others? Okay, so I actually do have something to add to this. Um, so I, as an autistic and dyspraxic person, found it very difficult to understand deadlines, I suppose. Like I would know that a deadline was on the 23rd of October, but I wouldn't really realize that the 23rd of October was next week until it was the 22nd of October. So what I find is very important is to set internal deadlines. So if you've got two weeks to do something, realistically, they're expecting it will take at least a week. So you should probably allow yourself at least half the time, but I'd say more like 60 to 70%, because then if you have a bad day or something comes up, it's not a problem. You just skip that day and continue on. Um, I also have an app called Tasks. Tasks is only available on Android, unfortunately, but it is a wonderful to-do list. And what I love about it is that it's colorful and that you can tick things off and it will say completed and the time it was completed and the day. And you can set deadlines and reminders and you can have multiple lists going, but basically it's just a way of keeping a to-do list that it doesn't get lost because when I try and do to-do lists on paper, I, Lord knows where they are. I actually stumbled across a to-do list from fifth class um, the other day, <laughs> which was entertaining. And uh, again, this is very similar to what I was saying about the folders, but know whether you're better off with something physical or something online, and then have either a Google Calendar or a physical diary or a physical calendar, and just make note of not only the final deadline, well, it is a final deadline, but not only like the ultimate deadline, but the little steps. Because when you're looking at a huge essay or a big lab report, it's much easier to say, okay, I'm going to do the introduction today than I want to do this lab report next week. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you, Cathy. And how do you think first year students can adapt to learning in higher education after coming from secondary school? And some of those tips that you've just mentioned would be brilliant. Okay, so the first thing you need to acknowledge is that it's going to be different. And the second thing you need to acknowledge is that different isn't necessarily worse. So in some ways, being in college is less stressful than being in secondary school. I'm not sure if everyone agrees, but um, I think that there are more individual supports in college and there's less media hype in the lead up to your exams. So once you do your college exams, it's not like it's all over the news and there's someone outside the schools waiting to hear how people got on and on results day. It's not a national event. And then the other thing is there are repeats. So if things go badly, you can defer exams, you can repeat exams. And in most colleges, there is a fine for that, but it's not all or nothing. This one day is everything hype. So in some ways, it's, um, it's a little less stressful. In other ways, it is tougher, on the other hand. <laughs> I'd say that it requires more personal responsibility. What I know of autistic people, um, being autistic myself and my autistic friends, one of the things we have in common is that we're very determined and also we hold ourselves accountable more than I think our peers do. So I think in some ways college suits us better than secondary school because we don't necessarily need our hand held and be guided along and to have a teacher making sure we're doing the work because we're willing to do the work in and of ourselves knowing it's what we want to do. And then the other way in, in which it's tougher is that it requires organization. So, you know, I'd say defer to my other answers as to how to be more organized, but basically go into it with the attitude that you're going to have to find your feet and it's going to be a little bit challenging because the content is a bit tougher even though it's in fields that you enjoy. And it's going to be 
new, which is always a challenge, but that it's not all, it's a not all negative. There are things that you have natural strengths at that are going to play to your advantage as much as you have natural challenges which you can overcome by being a bit smart and a bit organised. Brilliant. Thank you, Cathy. And if social, if social events are not happening due to COVID-19, do you have any experience or advice on how students can engage with their peers online? Well, nobody really has experience of what the next semester will be like socially, but um, being the chairperson of the Neurodivergent Society and knowing other chairs, I know that we're all doing our best to accommodate this new way of holding events. So in some ways, I think it's almost an opportunity for people on the spectrum to socialize without having to be in person because a lot of events now are happening over Zoom. A lot of conversations are happening online through text channels and through uh, voice calls and such. So it's important to, first of all, think about yourself. Okay, what suits me? Am I best off going to meetings, not meetings, but um, events in person? And if so, you can kind of look towards large societies who'd have permission to do socially distanced events. Or are you better off kind of on text channels and then look for societies who have um, WhatsApp or Discord channels? So it's all about kind of knowing yourself in this situation. And if there's a society or a club or a student's union thing you want to do and they aren't holding it in a way that suits you, always just approach the person who is in charge of the event or in charge of that society or club because the vast majority of students who volunteer their time towards societies and clubs actually care a lot about getting engagement from people more so than membership so if you tell them look I'm really passionate about this it's one of my special interests and I'd show up to every event if I could wear my headphones and that wasn't a problem or if you had a text channel and I could just interact that way and then build up my confidence towards going to in-person events. From what I know, at least in DCU, the vast majority of chair people would be willing to um, accommodate things like that. And if they're not, go above their heads. <laughs> it's just a particularly nice thing to do, but accessibility is important and your, ne your needs are valid. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. Very good. And if you could go back to yourself in first year, what's the one piece of advice that you would give yourself? Um, that you are deserving, you're capable, and you're worthy. And then if a bonus too, <laughs> because I I like the sound of my own voice apparently, um, you're not alone, and that you can break anything up into manageable pieces. Brilliant. brilliant. Thank you so much, Cathy. That was absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you. Um, I'm sure lots and lots of students are going to get so many valuable tips there. So, uh, Adam, which, can you introduce yourself, please, and tell us what subjects you're studying and where you are studying? Hi, my name is Adam Greenan, and I'm studying media production in Foster uh, Duig in Coolock, and I'm going to into my second year in September. Brilliant, thank you. Um, what advice would you give to first year students who are starting their course? If you have uh, any kind of uh, learning difficulties or uh, need help in it with your uh, work in any way, I would advise to apply for the uh, learning support uh, as soon as you get the chance. Like as an autistic person, uh, I. I didn't need uh, much help, but I still applied for it anyway, since uh, I I did apply for like uh, um, resource classes uh, in secondary school. Well, there, there was one example of a time where I did need help in college is where I had to write a report on the media industry. Like I knew what to write, but I just found it difficult to uh, 
uh, find out how to like research everything. But uh, I so I asked my uh, guided learning support counselor for help, and uh, he basically uh, uh, taught me how to research, and uh, it made it much easier for me. I would also advise to uh, get to know your uh, classmates and your tutors uh, because uh, some of your assignments will require group work and uh, it will make it uh, easier to adapt at with your uh, group and uh, your tutors as well because uh, the, so you can have uh, someone to uh, contact uh, if you're having any problems. And uh, one more thing, uh, uh, I would advise to uh, go to any open days uh, of your college and your course to like uh, get a grasp of what uh, the college building is like, as well as uh, what your course will involve, and uh, also uh, also get to know your tutors and the students as well, and uh, you your you also get your like a uh, timetable of uh, what day you should be in college uh, for each of your subjects. Thank you, Adam. Um, what did you find helpful in the first term that you would recommend to other students? One thing I found helpful is in terms of uh, completing assignments, uh, more than one inside assignments at the same time. So uh, say you have like a, uh, two uh, assignments to do at, do at once. W one, it, one, the first assignment has a deadline of like the 24th of September, and then you have a second assignment uh, that is due for like the 4th of October. What I would do is uh, start up on my first assignment first, and then my second assignment later on. And what I would also do is break my assignments down into parts and uh, plan when I should do uh, each part or uh, what day I should do each part. And I would also uh, spend a bit more time on the, the more uh, the assignments that require more work than uh, the other one, which is uh, much easier to finish. And it also, uh, another thing that helped was uh, in college, I found it easier to uh, make new friends because uh, the, the, my friends uh, are doing the same course and are studying the exact same thing as me and uh, they may have similar uh, interests and personality traits as well. Like in secondary school I wasn't as sociable back then because uh, there wasn't as much time to get to know everyone and they might have like uh, different interests to you So and uh, in college I had much more time uh, to communicate with my friends. Brilliant, thank you Adam, really really good. How can first year students adapt to their learning and higher education after coming from secondary school? Well in secondary school there are subjects that you are required to learn by the Department of Education which means there's going to be some subjects that you will enjoy learning and <coughs> And there are also subjects you won't like learning. And there's also, uh, you are also required to uh, put a lot of effort into studying for exams for each subject. While in college, uh, it's much different because you are learning the things you like and uh, the things you enjoy learning, you're interested in it. And uh, if the course is mainly theory based, uh, there will be a couple of exams, but uh, I'd assume it wouldn't be as a tough as secondary school. And if there isn't much theory involved, you might get like one or two little exams. And uh, so overall, I feel that uh, college would, is more relaxed and uh, interesting in terms of what you're learning and uh, how your tutors uh, treat you as. Very good, very good. And if social events not happening due to COVID-19, have you any experience or advice to students about how they can interact with other peers online? Well, at the start of uh, the year, uh, one of my, what one of my college friends did is uh, 
uh, we wrote down all our phone numbers and gave it to one of our students and uh, she created uh, a WhatsApp group with all of us in it and uh, we mainly use it to discuss uh, college work and uh, we also uh, try to help each other out if we need help on any, any of the assignments. Very good, excellent tip. And if you could go back to first year and tell yourself one piece of advice, what would it be? What I would change about first year is to, is to like uh, contribute in group projects more at the start of the year because uh, when I first started college, I was a bit shy when joining groups of new people because like I haven't really uh, met them beforehand and it was quite difficult to uh, for me to input ideas because uh, my ideas started becoming very vague because there's multiple possibilities of uh, how to do this and how to do that. And, but eventually I got to know uh, my group more throughout the year and became more confident in uh, contributing ideas. Like uh, what, one example is uh, in my radio group when uh, we were required to uh, uh, broadcast a radio program and uh, when one of my group uh, put down, uh, <clears throat> inputted uh, his ideas of uh, topics uh, we're going to discuss in the program, um, in my mind it felt very vague, vague the way he like uh, explained them, and so uh, I didn't really have any idea how to expand on them. But eventually, the week before our program will be broadcasted. Uh, I had a much clearer understanding of how to expand on it because like as I kind of based it on like all the bits and pieces we have so far and uh, it made it easier for me to like uh, create a proper structure and then uh, write scripts and and uh, we eventually put it all together. Brilliant, brilliant. That's fantastic advice, Adam. Thank you so much. Um, brilliant, you can take a breather now. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. So Ben, uh, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you're studying and where you're studying, please? I can, of course. Thanks very much, Katie. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Rousam. Uh, I'm studying physics in Trinity College, going into my second year. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Thanks. Great. That's super. So Ben, I'm oh, sorry. Then, what advice would you give to first year students who are just starting their course in September? Advice to first year students? Well, I think the one uh, week in the year that's extremely important, in spite of the fact that there are no lectures on during that week, is Freshers' Week. And the reason I emphasize that week is because obviously it's the one week where all the societies promote themselves with all their stands, and there'll be various orientations throughout the week, etc. But the way I see it, I don't think it's something the college will necessarily emphasize, but I think it's important to realize that that's the one week in the year where you can familiarize yourself with the college as much as you can before you actually start. So suss out where all your various lecture halls are, find out some good places to eat or um, see if you can find out some of the shortcuts between one lecture building from another. Uh, that kind of stuff, because um, I mean, you don't want to be scrambling to find out all that stuff on the first week of lectures, because then you might be late to some of your lectures, and then it's just you're a big stress ball, and it, it doesn't help anyone. It really, really doesn't. I certainly found that a big help. Uh, no, I certainly would have visited the college uh, a good few times before college started. I mean, say during the summer, just to familiarize myself with the college again but the reason I suppose it's so important during freshers week is because that's also time for you to garner experience and tips from other students who may be a couple of years ahead of you because you may bump into a second year or a third year and you may get chatting to one of them at the society stands and they might say oh yeah well that's a good place to eat or or don't go there the coffee there is really dear or whatever whatever these little things that will actually make life in college uh more manageable or possibly maybe even more interesting uh to an extent but no definitely plan your uh, freshers week you know so set where all your orientations are before freshers week itself because i know for me for one i had to decipher a load of codes to figure out which lecture hall i had to go to and stuff uh so um that was how and i had as 
a physics student, I had a load of orientations. I mean, it wasn't just a case of here's your physics orientation. We'll see you next week. And it wasn't like that at all. Uh, so definitely in that respect, be planning your freshers week. Um, you're encouraged to sign up to as many societies as you want. So by all means, will you go to all the meetups during the year? Probably not. No, but you know, over the years, you can just dip in and out of various societies, you know, and uh, I suppose that's what college life is all about. I mean, don't be afraid um, to embrace yourself uh, in, in, in college life uh, from the word go. That doesn't mean, you know, going all in straight away. But um, I suppose um, there's a lot to take away from college, even, even for first year students, for sure. Thank you, Ben. What did you find helpful in the first term that you would recommend to other students? Well, I know Kathy and Adam already have mentioned the idea of deadlines. And I think it is worth bringing up again because I don't think it's one of those. I mean, you might have gotten away with it in primary and secondary, but in college, it just does not work the same way. You're like, oh, I have something due for November 5th. I'll have a look at it November 3rd, November 4th. It really does not work like that. Because if they set something for you that's in two weeks' time, chances are it takes about one and a half weeks, two weeks to complete. Not all the time, but, you know... It, for a good quality assignment or a good quality exam or whatever, you you want to take the time that's provided to you, whether that be two weeks, a couple of days. Um, so that I definitely found that helpful. I also found it very helpful. Now this slightly runs into the next question, so I'll only touch on it now uh, for this one. Uh, but also, um, you know, don't be afraid to see how other students are or your friends, I should say. Uh, are approaching uh, a particular assignment or a particular question and uh, I suppose that thing about uh, friends you know and again Kathy and Adam touched it and again I mean if you're a first year student watching this I will tell you now you'll probably have you'll have no problem making friends uh, in college I was uh, very scared that I wouldn't make any friends in, in college and I think I made like three in the first week so you know and I made more from, from there on in so you know you will find yourself with a group of people that you have a lot in common with. I mean, it's not a case of, oh, I guess I'm left with these guys for the rest of the semester or whatever. You know, uh, these guys relate to you. You have common interests and you, in, in a way, probably think uh, in, in similar ways, uh, but in a different enough way that they're approaching questions differently. And it's in that way that you can garner further experience again as to how to approach the work. Because uh, I know it's in science. I can't, I don't know if I can say the same for the, the arts of humanities, but certainly in the sciences, you know, you have to look at questions and tasks from different perspectives in order to find, you know, a suitable answer or an array of answers. So um, definitely for me studying physics, I felt it was very important to take the time that I was given all the time to complete a particular assignment, to have the most in-depth understanding of that assignment or that subject and to see how others were approaching the various assignments. Thank you, Ben. That's brilliant. And how can first year students adapt to learning in higher education from coming from secondary school? Yeah, it's a funny one because, uh, again, as I say, uh, Kathy and Adam have touched on this now already. I mean, it's drastically different learning in college because, um, I mean, there's a lot more on you. I mean, you know, you're certainly not being spoon-fed the information anymore. No one's holding you by the hand. You know, this is, this is independent learning. I mean, you will do most of your learning outside the lecture hall rather than in. Uh, and I think that's worth mentioning now to first-year students because maybe some won't know that. They'll just assume, you know, here's the information, go learn it off. It's not like that at all. Um, you see, it's not, uh, and again, this probably starts from leaving Sir Amwart. Uh, there's less of a case of rope learning. I think it's a more of you acquiring skills to approach a particular question because you probably won't know the answer offhand. But you say, okay, let's take what we've learned already and let's see if we can arrive at a good, educated guess of an answer, say. Um, but in terms of how you can best avail of uh, learning in college, what I would say is definitely trust your lecturers because they have the most in-depth knowledge of that subject in anyone in the room. And they're passionate about their subject. That will be evident to you when you're sitting in the lecture hall and they're going through all the material. I mean, they just have the greatest passion for it. And the student to lecture relationship is a very important one in college, arguably a very uh, complicated one, but it certainly is the most important uh, in that you can take a lot away from them in terms of, similar to how I mentioned about um, 
friends earlier, the way they uh, approach a problem, uh, how they see the question from the word go. How do, you, how do we break this down to make the most of the information that's provided in the question? So there's a student to lecture relationship. And then obviously I've mentioned earlier, there's a student to student relationship. Don't be afraid to see how others are approaching the question. Because you might sit down to answer a question on assignment. You go, how the hell do I approach this? You know, have a look and see how others are doing it. There's no one, and this is, this is certainly in a way um, with science and probably with the arts and humanities as well. There's no one right way to do a question. There's a whole, I mean, there's more, chances are, there's a whole uh, array of ways at approaching a question and answering the question. Don't be afraid to see um, how, the, how the array of ways takes form and how you can take that and apply it to your own learning in college because you're learning from others as well as from uh, as well as from the lecture and I think that's important about um, college life uh, in general maybe as opposed to um, as opposed to secondary school. Thank you Ben, thank you. And if social events not happening due to COVID-19, do you have any tips or experience on how young people can interact with their peers online? Yeah, I suppose a lot of uh, the tips I'd be giving now are a lot of the ways in which students can communicate during the first semester come the new academic year is probably a lot of the stuff that's already happening at the moment. There's stuff like um, video calls and stuff, whether that be like us now on Zoom or Skype or uh, Microsoft Teams uh, or whatever way um, you, want to, um, you want to communicate. I mean, that's the first way uh, I would emphasize and students will certainly be encouraged to communicate that way come the new academic year with regards to study groups, etc. Because as I say, um, the student to student relationship is just as important as the student to lecture relationship, if not even more important, because you're learning from uh, loads of different students that will think different ways, but in a similar enough way that you can relate to them. Uh, so um, in terms of obviously the whole um, uh, COVID-19 thing, it, it may be a lot harder for students to, um, to socialize come the new academic year. So uh, there'll definitely be a great emphasis and there should be a great emphasis on uh, video calls or whatever uh, virtual way there is of communicating uh, with one another. Uh, I suppose uh, it might even be a clever idea in terms of say online lectures because I know for my um, for my course now next year chances are I'll probably have a few um, lectures that will be online because you could have anything up to 150 people in the one lecture hall which may not be plausible given the current situation so it might be nice you have a look at the online lecture. Okay, there it is, there's the info. Do you want, let's have a debrief, you know? And then you have say a half an hour call, 45 minute call with your friends, just to go through the information again, uh, or maybe go through a particular assignment that's due in however many weeks time. I think that will probably be more of a, of a common thing. And it's certainly something I would encourage to first year students in terms of um, keeping in contact with one another because um, that will be important. Okay, brilliant, thank you. And finally, so you were giving yourself a piece of advice um, if you go back to yourself first year. Yeah, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit. So uh, yeah, I would definitely say to myself, you know, uh, you matter, you deserve to be here in Trinity College. You are a junior freshman studying physics in Trinity College. You know, and uh, it just, uh, when, when I say that loud now, it sounds like, wow, I can't believe it. At the time though, I, I didn't really see it. Uh, I mean. I, um, I had very little confidence, if anything, no confidence uh, coming into the new academic year in uh, Intrinity College. I had had a pretty rough summer. Um, I was actually good at leaving secondary school. Uh, I, not, I know not everybody will relate. Uh, some people will have been delighted to have uh, left the place. But I was actually very close to, the, to my peers and the teachers uh, in, uh, in St. Killian. So I was, I, I was pretty good at starting college. It was a very, very difficult transition in that respect. Uh, I'd had a very serious bereavement during the summer as well. Uh, not the lie out of me. Uh, so a combination of those two, just other stuff in general as well. And uh, the first semester was hard and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it through the however many weeks it was, 12 weeks, 13 weeks, I don't know. Um, so I would, yeah, uh, but I did, you know, and I, I really found my place in Trinity College. But if I could go back and I could tell myself something, is that, you know, you deserve to be here, you know? You belong here, this is, this is your place. I mean, it's not a case of, oh, you picked the wrong course, you might want to think about that one again. You know, no, no, this is, this is how it's meant to be, and you know, all is, all is well with the world. 
Thank you so much, Ben. Absolutely so welcome. Much there, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for all your input. Um, I'm Emma Buckley, I'm in Minute, and I'm studying general science. Very good, super. So what advice would you give to first year students before they start their course? Uh, the first bit of advice I'd give, which was the most important for me, was to get to know the college layout. To get to know where things are, the shops around the college, understanding where the buildings are, because I got lost the first lecture I had to go to. It said computer labs, which is in Callan, but no one, but they forgot to change the ID for it. We we're saying it was in a different building. <laughs> that was fun. Um, learn, go to the social weeks, the activities. Um, in Manute, they had lunch pad, which was for people who went from here, there, and everything else that I can't remember the names of. And it was just for us all to get to know each other, to meet people. It was actually pretty great, my friend there. It was to help everyone adjust and calm down and get used to college. I also recommend you use technology if you're comfortable with it, because um, if they offer the support, they will probably offer things that you never heard of and that you will absolutely need. Get to know your support staff, know who's in the, who goes for each disability. For example, we had someone who was special in the physical disabilities and someone who's special in the others. And the thing was that they had different appointment times, but when you first went there, you didn't know who was who. So, um, use everything they have, uh, use everything they offer you. Even if you don't think you're gonna like it or do it, go to the open week, open days, go to all of them. Understand everything that you want. Walk around it, even if you're not going to go to a lecture. Um, and use all supports available. Any supports that you'll need by the end of the year. Just get rid of them. You can keep the ones that are useful. And that's the main thing. Brilliant. Thank you, Emma. And what do you find most helpful in your first term of college that you can let others know? Um, I use technology for one thing to help me. Because of my dyslexia and my autism, I found it quite hard to keep up with notes and understand what the lecture was saying. So I have three softwares on my computer. One records lectures with the permission of the lecturer. One writes out what I say in notes. And one just holocrests everything. Oh, and one reads any files I've been giving, like the homework for maths, that was a great help. You won't believe how many times class seven and two mixed up because of their handwriting. <laughs> uh, join societies, join any society you're interested in. Don't you don't have to go to them all as everyone else has said, but it's a great help to get to meet people who have similar interests to you, who like the same things as you. It also helps that you're not always making friends with people in your own um, studies because it makes you more open-minded, like the arts people and the science people great to talk to each other because you're seeing things from different perspectives um, put yourself out there if there are some societies that you're like will i go to it just go if there's a question of it go go and see it see if you enjoy it if you don't enjoy it it's grand if you do enjoy it keep going and um, also like for example one of my friends wanted me to join the dancing society I hate dancing, I hate music, they give you free alcohol, and I hate alcohol. So the great thing for me with that one was, I went, I did not like it, but at least I know that I went there, I could do it. I had a plan to get out of the evening activity if I didn't like it, which is basically to say, mom called and I have to go home to look after my sister. Great help. Also, if your parents are willing, make them the bad guys. If you need to get out of the situation, because it's a great help to have an app. Think of an app before you go. You don't have to use it, but it's great help. And of course, use your access program to the full extent of their ability. Mine offered appointments regularly, so I made one every week. Went to talk about anything that happened, even if it was nonsense, and they're just like, hi, I need to talk to you because it's bugging me for the last day. I was like, oh, oh, I read it wrong, thanks. But so it's simple things like that, just to talk to someone who's in the profession, 
always contact your lecturers. Get to know them. And because they will help you, and they don't care how you got to their lecture, how you got to the college, you're there, you're the student. That's all they care about. Believe me, we, they have to explain it to the people at Launchpad who are nervous about contacting. And talk to your friends because they'll have a similar idea to you. Because if you're stuck, they're stuck, talk it out and you might understand it. Because as good as the lecturers are, they know what they're talking about. We don't, we're just trying to understand it. Brilliant, thank you, Emma. And how can first year students adapt to learning in higher education coming from secondary school? And um, the first thing I'd say is have a plan if things get too much. So I knew there was a coffee shop on my campus. And surprising to believe, drinking coffee counts me down. So whenever I got too stressed, I was like, we'll have a long walk to the camp, have a long walk to the coffee shop, take the coffee, drink it. Doesn't matter if you're late to the lecture, just text your friends saying you're going to be late or tell them um, you have something on. Just sit down, calm yourself, and when you're ready to go back in, go back in. Use, as I said before, everything they have available, which is definitely technology is one thing to really help because even if you don't like it, even if you like physical notes, sometimes having a recording of what the lecture said, listening to me, I was like, oh, that's something important because you could have missed it in the lecture. Email lectures if you get stuck because they're the experts. For example, one person was very confused as a lecture, at um, a point in the lecture where he said, basically it's plant biologists, I'm not gonna bore you with it. It was two very similar terms. And he asked him about it and the lecture had actually got mixed up, which actually had a lot of the students there and said like, oh God, we didn't get that mixed up. Oh, we're not wrong. Oh, we did not just waste that week. So even lecturers sometimes need, so contact them, talk to them. If you're stuck, they're a great help. So our friends, remember they're in a similar boat to you. And go to your lectures, go to everything. And make sure you go, to, it's not like optional where you're like in school, like, oh, I'll come back and then talk about it. So you won't talk about it, it's the next lecture. That lecture is gone unless you have a friend leave you notes. So go to everything possible, talk to um, people who have been in the year above you, in some clubs or the student, or the, yeah, that means. I would talk to people who are years older than you because they have experience and they will be able to help you. Even if it's something as simple as don't go to that building if you don't want to get food poisoned. Because <laughs> they will have advice that you don't. Very good, Emma, thank you. And um, if social events are not happening due to COVID-19, do you have any um, advice to students about how they can interact with their peers online? Well, one big way to interact with your peers online is talking to them through social media. So Zoom, Microsoft, Skype. I don't know many of these things. I don't like social media, but things like that. For example, me and my friends, we would talk to each other on uh, Microsoft sometimes. But the thing is, is like when one of us says we don't want to, when we don't even show our faces, we're just like, yeah, yeah, let's talk even though we accidentally put in the video call <laughs> or an arranged time to talk with them. So like in the, like arranged time. So like this day, 2 p.m., I'm talking to my friends. Doesn't matter if I'm tired or not, I can tell them. It can be a short conversation, a long conversation. You don't know how it's gonna go. We can rant about random topics for hours because that is very much possible. And it's good to stay in touch. Also, try new things with them. For example, me and my friends have started to play Dungeons and Dragons, which is very exciting for me. But the thing is, is that because we're all trapped in our houses, we can't meet up, we can't do shopping, we can't do anything that we would like to do, so we've started something new. And even if it doesn't go well, or if we don't like it, the main thing is that it's something to keep us in touch. Thank you, Emma. And finally, if you could go back to yourself in first year, what advice would you give yourself? Uh, my advice for myself would be, it's a brand new start. Everyone's in the same boat as you. People are very open. There is no competition but yourself. 
because no one else cares about your grades but you. The lectures only care if you fail, and then you just do a repeat test, which is grand. It's not the end of the world. It's not the leaving cert. It's not, oh my God, my God, this is my only shot. It's like, all right, I can see where I went wrong. I have to study more of that. I have to pay for the, I have to pay for doing it again, but that's grand. Because, so you don't fail. The only way you could fail is continuous assessments, which in my advice is just get your head down, do them, because that's the only way you can do them. And don't put them off the last minute, as everyone else has said, because if they're giving you a week, it's going to take you around a week. They're not giving you extra time. Um, everyone's new, so everyone's open to talk to people. Everyone wants to make new friends. So you're not going to be, for my experience in secondary school, was very bad, so it's not going to be like that. Unlike Ben's, who is very positive. Um, everyone's starting off new, and it's just going to be a new start, and you can do it. You've gotten there. You're in the college. You've already gone over the first hurdle. So you're there. What more do you have to worry about? Everyone else is going to be the same. You're all just nervous that you're there and wanting to do your course. Brilliant. I think that's a, um, a brilliant statement to finish up there with, Emma. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you, Cathy, Adam, Ben, Fiona and Emma for all of your input. Um, it was so good to hear all of your advice. I know it's going to be absolutely invaluable to students starting in September. So thank you all. Can I add something, Katie? Yes, Fiona, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think something that could be useful is to look at your academic year and pinpoint times that you think are going to cause you energy, you're going to need energy and might cause stress. It's like a debit and a credit of your energies and your mental health. So if you know around exam, exam time that that's going to be a time where you're going to use a lot of energy, pinpoint that, code it, and make sure you have time off before and make sure you take time to decompress after. And it's not only with academic um, exams or CEA that you'll use up energies. Think of other external events happening in your life and just really account for them and plan ahead that you may need time off before and after to decompress. And also put in time to celebrate. You know, celebrate that you've got into university. Make sure that you celebrate all your achievements throughout the year celebrate you've joined a society, celebrate you had a conversation with somebody that you were very nervous about, celebrate you passed an exam. So make sure that you mark all these achievements and also make sure that you mark times that you know are going to be anxiety or stress provoking for you. Brilliant, thank you Fiona, really, really good advice. Um, does anyone else have anything they want to finish on? I think we've covered a lot today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Um, and we will talk to you soon.